Hello, my friends, and welcome to the finals of GP Birmingham. You're in the booth with Riley Knight. Alongside me, it is the Pro Tour champion, Simon Gertzen, out of Germany. And on your screen, Steve Haddo, Loic Lebriand, Black Green Rock versus Burn here. Simon, both players mulliganing to six, both players scrying to the top. And we are off to the races already. Blooming Marsh opening things up for Steve Haddo after a Monastery Swift Spear has got in for one already for Lebriand. And an Inquisition of Kozlek going to open things up here for the Luxembourgian. Nice uh, quick gameplay here. These players made the top eight in seventh and eighth place. Mm, yeah, really just crept in there, snuck in right at the death. This means, uh, logically, that they were on the draw in the quarterfinals and in the semifinals. That's, mean, that's impressive. That's actually a really good point to notice because, of course, uh, in the top eight, you're the, you, we don't uh, flip coins or roll dice to determine who's going to go first. It all, all comes down to your seed your place after the Swiss so these guys have really had to get up and about in order to uh, to, ca to capitalize on their opponents here yeah this was a, a really interesting inquisition um, there were two shrines of burning rage in Loic's hand so there was no way to deny the turn to shrine so in a certain sense Steve could have tried to um, basically flood Loic with shrines with the mana intensive shrines and take away the take away the rift bolts the Rift Bolt in Loic's hand. He did, however, um, decide that Loic should only be playing with a single Shrine of uh, Burning Rage. Loic Le Briand, not going to forget that uh, Shrine of Burning Rage trigger. He's put six dice on the top of his library to make sure he doesn't forget. I guess by the th time he's removing the third or the fourth, he'll may maybe think about why they're there. Steve Haddo with his second Marsh here coming into play untapped. We touched upon the fact that uh, the mana base of the Black Green deck is so much better. But look at this. This card is huge against Burn. Collective Brutality on turn two for Steve Haddo. This card, I mean, so much utility against so much of the field. But against Burn, Collective Brutality is just such a beating, Simon. That's a one-off too. Jeez, and he's managed to pull it off as well. That's incredible here. Managed to find the card and deploy it at exactly the right time. And we see now a Rift Bolt hit the bin after the uh, Monastery Swift Spear also dies. Interesting that Steve Haddo choosing not to cash in his card there for uh, another card for two extra lives. Uh, he's holding Fetchland, um, Witness, and Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay, of course, possibly dealing with the Shrine. So he doesn't want to give up any of these cards. too important to continue his development. Goblin Guide going to tick up that uh, Shrine now to two, thanks to the upkeep trigger. And a free card for Steve Haddo. Th you please and thank you, he says, after the third Blooming Marsh hits his hand. And, uh, I mean, these fast lands are just so, so crucial here. Third third painless land. Yeah. Uh, untapped painless land. That's that's huge. And when we think about it, you know, if, if Steve Haddo were playing Abzan or Jun, these, you can't afford to play that many fast lands and, and in a three-color deck. Perhaps you're not going to be able to get off to such a painless start here. So this is an interesting turn. I think the witness ultimately wants to get back collective brutality. Yeah, cast I, it again. I, I think that's that's the, that. the dream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Abrupt decay should target the shrine, but if you're not careful, then Loic will have mana available to to just pop it. Shrine of burning rage there. That's the innovation of of Loic. He is not playing Eidolon of the of the Great Revel, and given that he was on the draw in in both of the previous matches, I think. Uh, this has already paid off. Yeah, it's done really well for him. And the, and the Shrine of Burning Rage, as you mentioned before, Zimon, in a great position against decks like Death Shadow, where, you know, a single card being cashed in for six damage or so can be just huge. Yeah. And Steve had a difficult turn here. He's going for the Tarmogoyf, not for the Witness, um, not for the Abrupt Decay. I, I was expecting him to use three mana this turn to be able to use four mana next turn. But yeah. we will see how this develops. Well, that would make sense considering his hand does have, you know, a... a, a a dearth of, well, two drops there, but a, th a, th a three drop to, that could have been played just now. But no, no, choosing not to instead. Tamagoyf comes down, the biggest, baddest thump of that there is. It's going to hold off that Goblin Guide very nicely. Does Librion have another land? He does not. I mean, that Shrine of Burning Rage has got to be high on Haddo's radar. He can't sacrifice it just yet. Is this time for him to blow it up? I would I would uh, immediately abrupt decay that. It doesn't get much better. This would have been a five damage uh, spell at least yeah. for Loic. And away it goes because Lebrion unable to find that third land and no attacks from Steve Haddo. He's sitting pretty on 12 life. That is a considerably high total for a burn player to, uh, to whittle away at. But I think that collective brutality on turn two is just key. So important. Took care of the Monastery Swift Spear. Got rid of a Rift Bolt. I mean, in effect, it's gained him a bunch of life. Absolutely. And that's all that really matters when it comes down to this burn player. 
And another Rift Bolt off the top here has been uh, suspended. Haddo down to nine. Liliana um, of the Veil. Steve is also super careful here. Uh, doesn't doesn't even crack his fetch land if he doesn't have to, because he can always get basics. He doesn't. Uh, there's no additional value for, of getting um, an overgrown tomb. Some attacks now here for Steve Haddo as the Tarmogoyf gets in. Very very large creature here, knocking Lebrion down to 14. Draws and ships Haddo down to six. So all of a sudden, his life total is a little bit under siege here. A thought sees in hand is a bit of a blank ski as well. He needs to gain some life. Yeah, which is why I'm a bit concerned. He he waited a long time with that witness. She's down to three as well. This is perilous here because, of course, if Lavrion peels a fresh one off the top of the library... He's getting there. If he's I got a nice spicy, spicy pit of pepperoni coming off the top here, he's going to be in big trouble. Collected company coming back to the hand, but it may be too late. The top card of the library... On the slow roll, look, Lebrion going to flip it over. It's a Boros charm. Getcha. And that is all she wrote for game number one. Over. Blink and you'll miss it. Simon Gertzen. Well, this is just burn. Uh, it's, you know it, right? It's uh, somehow in the end, uh, you're, you're always looking at that to one top deck, that uh, at least one top deck that you have to sweat. Jeez, and he didn't manage to fade it, of course. I mean, a land off the top would have spelled something completely different. Maybe an extra turn or two with the collective brutality that was going to come down, maybe gain a little bit of life. But, uh, I mean, Steve Haddo, uh, that fetch line didn't do anything. He should have discarded it to gain the life. <laughs> he didn't even crack it. No. Yep. Wow. Well. At that point, he, he was he was missing his third land. So I think, I think what he had to do, the Liliana was just too slow. I think he yeah. had to play the witness the turn, the turn earlier. Well, Haddo's now going to be able to position his deck in a, in a more favorable position here to uh, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this burn deck. Let's see what he's working with here. One copy of Damnation in addition to a Liliana's Defeat, Liliana the Last Hope, Ramunap Excavator, and a Surgical Extraction as one of two copies of Flaying Tendrils, two Graf Digger's Cage, two Nile Spell Bombs, and the full four copies of Fulminator Mage. Now, none of these cards immediately, Zimon, uh, scream out at me at, as being uh, Stone Cold Hoses of the burn deck. All of these cards look pretty mediocre. I mean, this is something that we touched upon earlier on in the day, talking about the fact that Burn not being on the top of uh, top of the tables, not being high on people's radars, people are skimping on their life gain cards. Yeah, Steve Hatter has two kitchen things and that one uh, collective brutality in the main deck. And that's it. I mean, even scavenging ooze as a two of is going to gain him a little bit of life, but. I mean, Collective Brutality, there's no excuse not to play this card. It's good against so many different decks. It's rarely bad in the matchups that you want it, and I, I think this is a, a card that people have really skimped on. I, I would play I would play more in the sideboard. I yeah. would want to go yeah. up to two or three. Absolutely. Up, up the Absolutely. Because, again, it's very rare that you have a card that is, is very good against burn and serviceable against control and decent, uh, like somewhere about mediocre against creature decks. Very good against Collective Company decks. Very good, you Very say. Good. Very good. Very good. Very wow. good. It kills the early mana accelerants and combo creatures. Yeah. The Dusk Watch recruiters, almost any creature. Mm -hmm. Plus, it takes the scariest instance from, from their hand. I guess if you can cast it turn two, turn three, then you're going to get it out of the hand nice and early, assuming they're not going to be able to power it out early. There are there are players who play elves. Yeah. There are players who play pure control decks where you just want as many duress effects as possible. All Com right. Combo decks. Well, you heard it here. You need to be playing Collective Brutality, especially after Loic Lebriand gave an absolute masterclass in how to get through a uh, very swift burn game there. What about his sideboard, Zimon? Are we looking at anything that he may be uh, looking to uh, fix up his deck with? Let's see. He has four Destructive Revelry, um, two Shattering Sprees. So any kind of artifacts or enchantments he mm. can deal with. I don't think that's uh, something that he's expecting in Steve Hato's deck, though. Uh, two Grim Lava Mancers, that's always a card you can you can think about um, swapping for mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, weaker cards or maybe you want to somehow trick your opponent, they don't want to have too much removal, but because you're only playing eight creatures, the just the option of going up to 10 is, is kind of nice. Uh, and then the rest, two core Firewalkers, definitely not uh, two Path to Exile. I'm not a big fan of going too reactive. No. Especially because this is not like Death Shadow that can make a huge creature which you want, which you have to deal with. This is more um, traditional black-green deck. And then three Relic of Progenitus. That's a card I really like. Okay. Pr Relic of Progenitus, of course. It has upside against things like Kitchen Finks. It shrinks uh, Tarmogoyfs. It means that Scavenging Ooze isn't able to... Uh, 
feed itself so effectively, but it's not a stone cold hoser by any means. No, it's it's basically the opposite. It's it triggers prowess and it replaces itself. Um, it's also not something you, you desperately need. But if if you want to make some changes, I don't know, for example, uh, what Loic thinks of the Shrine of Burning Rage after sideboarding. Um, I don't know what he thinks of the Searing Blaze. Now, both of these players do have access to each other's deck lists. So, uh, Loic Lebrion will be looking at Steve Hatter's deck list and noticing that he doesn't have any disenchant effects in the board. So, you know, he's not having to play around Nature's Claim or, or Natural State or anything when it comes to uh, defending his, his Shrines of Burning no, Rage. Just, just the Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay's in the main, as we saw, it already took care of it. And a Maelstrom Pulse as well, uh, to think about that. But, uh, you know, even if he did, the fact that he's not playing um, Eidolon of great, the, the Great Revel, I mean, uh, Steve Hatter's never bringing a decent chance against him anyway. No, no. The, the interesting part for me is actually what... Steve brings in because he has to bring in some cards. Yeah, he has to take out his dark uh, confidence. He has to take out these uh, these dudskis here. Otherwise, he's uh, he's going to be fighting an uphill battle. I mean, Nihil Spellbomb cycles. Yes, but that's not really not what you want to do to shrink your own Um Maybe maybe Flaying Tendrils. Flaying Tendrils can take care of those Goblin Guides and the Monastery Swift Spears, but against eight creatures, you can play you can play Fulminator Mage. You can play the other Liliana, the last top, although that really doesn't do much. No. Ramon Excavator as a nice blocker. Yeah, it's a 2-3. Yeah, sure. Get in the way of those 2-2s two for sure. Well, Steve had it without a huge amount of options here. He's not going to, uh, you know, we don't have the sort of the life goes on tech. We don't have these, uh, you know, these the the extra kitchen finks. Or again, as we came back to the, the collective brutalities, how much would this guy want uh, a collect an extra collective brutality in his board here? Yeah, that, that now is the time to, to have it. And like, as we discussed, if you... If you cannot find enough cards to bring in, we might even see thought seizes after boarding. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this card, it, it on the face of it, doesn't make a lot of sense. Playing a, a card, a sorcery that de that deals you two damage, but Simon, there's, there's a little bit more to it than that. Yeah. Of course, it's a strictly worse uh, Inquisition in this matchup. Yep. However, if you trade uh, for a Boros Charm, uh, maybe a Shrine of Burning Rage. You are um, saving more li more damage than than you're uh, dealing to yourself. I mean, more or less every single card in Loic Lebrion's uh, deck does more than two damage, ideally. Exactly. And so, even if you are using a Thought Seize to take care of a Lightning Bolt or a Lava Spike, you're still up one life on that transaction. Having said that, you're down one mana. You're also down, you know, your turn rather than there, you know, down on tempo. But uh, I mean, Thoughtseize is not the sort of immediate snap straight into the sideboard that people may think it is. Let's see, holding the Brutality again. Jeez. The last card. Can't quite make it out. It no, could be a Fulminator Mage. I think it's a Fulminator Mage. Mage. Yeah, it's, I think it's a Fulminator Mage, and that makes sense here because he doesn't have a whole lot else to bring in. But this means he's looking at quite a clunky, cl quite a clunky hand. He has one discard spell, but after that it's only three drops. So Inquisition of Kozilek is going to take care of one of the scary cards in Loic Lebrion's hand, and he looks to have a very good hand here. Although a little bit, a little bit, I'm, I'm sure he wishes that one of those lands was actually, a, you know, a business spell here. But Monastery Swift Spear into Boros Charm means he's got a blistering start here, Simon. Yes, and uh, it's not clear what you take. If Steve really doesn't have a two, um, something to do on on turn two, I would, I think he should take the Monastery Swift Spear. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you look at which card is going to do more damage, uh, the Boros Charm guaranteed to do four. The Monastery Swift Spear, I mean. It's not hard to make that card do five or six damage, especially if it's going uncontested. Yeah, and, and this is kind of the decision point here. If you look at your hand of Tireless Tracker, Eternal Witness, and Fulminator Mage, and Liliana, actually, he, he doesn't even have a third land. Jeez. He knows that uh, most likely the Swift Sphere will go unopposed. Well, right now, Steve Haddo giving due consideration, but it is going to be T-Swift. Away she goes. Get that graveyard uh, sneaking off the battlefield once again. We'll have to get that pulled up so we can still see what's going on in uh, in there. And a Grim Lava Mancer off the top here, Simon. I like it. I was wondering if uh, Loic thought the Lava Mancer should come in. And uh, this is, of course, punishing Steve's decision to take the one drop because Loic does have a play on turn one. Yeah, he pulled it off nicely here. And a Blooming Marsh, but nothing to do with it for Steve Haddo as he... Gets the sick bluffs going, has a look at his hand that is full of three drops, of course. He did draw a l another land, so yeah. at least he knows that he will be uh, making plays from, from the next turn on. But Lebrion, I mean, he's, you know, he is a little flooded. He's a little flooded. He has to not draw lands here to continue, and a Relic of Progenitus is certainly not that, but it is, again, just kind of air. 
Mm, and has actually actual anti synergy. Oh yeah. With the with the lava mancer. With the lava mancer for sure. Yeah. Away goes the relic of. Oh sorry. Away, away goes the Inquisition. After that relic takes care of it, and no other plays here for Lebrion. I think he's just going to cycle it straight away. Uh, he or is he as soon as possible, I should say. First, he's going to yep. shoot for two. He yep. wants to milk the, the Lava Mancer for as much uh, damage as possible. Liliana of the Vale looks to be the play here for Steve Haddo. That is an answer to the Grim Lava Mancer, of course. And uh, I think Haddo will consider himself to be have, have, have been dealt with very leniently indeed, uh, considering that only, only two damage was done by the Grim, La Grim Lava Mancer. And we're going to see two damage pointed at Liliana. So a trade there, one for one. Jeez, three mana planeswalker trading for a one mana one one. Not sure about that. But now this relic of Regenitus can keep the graveyard nice and empty, and Lebrion doing this, of course, because of Tarmogoyf's coming down in the future. Steve is on is on twenty. I like where I like where this is going. We we know that Loic is willing to play a longer game. Uh, we've seen it in the semi-final. Um, Shrine of Burning Rage is a big reason why he can do that. He doesn't have any right now, but he has a handful of burn. So Helix. Charm Charm and a fetch land for Loic Le Brion. Tyler's Tracker, get that value with the Scavenger Grounds. Nice, nice, nice. Steve Haddo generates a clue token. And that's going to demand some kind of an answer. Do you... Yeah, we're going to see Loic Le Brion once again playing his deck like a control deck. Keeping that graveyard empty. Look at that. Le Brion is on top of it, doing it in his upkeep by the look of things. Very efficient plays. And he's not really doing anything with the cards in his hand. He doesn't have to play around counter spells. He doesn't have to worry about anything else like that. And Loic Le Brion looks to be uh, on that, that sort of burst damage plan here as well. That's, yeah, it's, it's really difficult to understand uh, why he's doing it. But in the end, he, he kind of expects um, Steve to run out of uh, steam if he just keeps him off these initial threats. So he's just saying, we can play a longer game. You're not beating me down. I don't see a Tarmogoyf. I have a Relic. This means if you draw a Tarmogoyf, I can shrink it. Mm. And this just drags out the game longer and longer. You will draw dead cards. You will draw Thoughts users. You will draw Inquisitions. You will draw Planeswalkers that don't pressure me. You'll draw and Grey Ogres here. Yes, as well. Yes, yeah, Grey Ogres, effectively. And Lebrion doesn't have to be too worried about this Fulminator Mage. I mean, it's not really doing too much against him, especially with this fetch land. And like knows the deck list exactly. Yeah. So mm. he knows there are two kitchen things, two scavenging oozes that he's not too big of a fan of. He doesn't, he wouldn't love to see either of these. The rest of the deck, he knows he can beat. Straight up. Yeah. No. No. In in uh, when it comes to that sort of thing, heads up. Then we know that Lebrion is definitely uh, ahead of the ahead of the curve here. As we see Boros Charm go upstairs, going to knock Hato down to sixteen. And this is this is actually funny because when you think about it, the the black green rock deck is built with the card advantage of dark confident in mind yeah however you cannot afford the life loss so you take him out but this puts loic on equal footing mm. yep because that's the way that the black green rock is able to grind through the late game and in, and in other matchups just completely burying uh, their opponents in card advantage. yeah that's it but here it's too much of a liability you can't play a bob into 13 life here and so they would have almost certainly hit the sideboard. Steve Hodo does have the onboard answer to a Shrine of Burning Rage in the form of uh, an Abrupt Decay in hand, or indeed a Maelstrom Pulse. Yeah, not quite on board, but... In hand. In hand. Forgive me. Might, might be on board soon. This Fulminator Mage looks really terrible. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. So, so good in so many matchups. I mean, you bring it against Tron, you bring it against Scape Shift. It also does a lot of work, surprisingly, against Blue White Control, just knocking out those Colonnades. If you play a turn three Stone Raid against them, it's just it's just excellent. It really is good against such a mana hungry deck. I, I like um, the fact that there are, wow, indestructibility. Jeez, look at that. That is techie. So, Abrupt Decay apparently can't be countered, but. Loic Le Brion has just done a great job of countering it. A, bro, uh, a Boros Charm has meant that it's indestructible, and as a result, is it this gets an extra counter. Is this genius or, or just a maniac? What I is mean, going on it here? It could this be very... There's a fine line between the two, I would say. There is Boros Charm. Again, we have the Loic Le Brion trademark six dice on top of his library to remember his, uh, his triggers here. 
my favorite part is that he has developed uh, a technique to draw from under these dice. So he doesn't have to take them off. He doesn't even off. have to take them off. So he can just he can just completely ignore the reminder that he's uh, set himself. He needs a little alarm clock there. A little padlock to uh, to keep himself from drawing. Okay. Wrap his deck up in elastic bands. Three more mana now, and Steve Hatter was not being able to play his uh, his cards the way he would have wanted to. This has been awkward uh, positioning for him as he's continued to not use his mana efficiently and effectively. Yeah. Also, uh, the relic keeping all creatures out of the graveyard. Yeah. Yep. Scavenging ooze isn't doing much either. So we will see the Shrine of Burning Rage blowing up the Scavenging Ooze. And look at this. Lebrion is wanting to get to the late game. It's it's insane. It's uh, bonkers. I, I've never seen a burn player do this before, but Loic Lebrion obviously knows what he wants to do here. I, I can't see Twitch chat right now, but this it must be in flames. Oh, it, yeah. It'd be in cappers. Get rid of one of your cards, he says. And Haddo chooses the... Maelstrom Pulse, Loic Lebrion draws. So Mono Red Control here with the Monastery Swift Spear getting in. Is Haddo going to go on the block? The Snap Block and Lightning Helix U, he says. And I would imagine this Fulminata Mage is going to knock out one of Loic Lebrion's lands. And it is going to indeed taking out his White Source. Bla blocking is a bit surprising there, right? If you know that there's a that there's a Prowess Enabler in, in Loic's hand. Mm. Not sure if I, if I agree with that. Tarmogoyf now. This guy's going to be huge thanks to Loic Le Brian's life uh, uh, graveyard, at least. But of course, the Relic of Progenitus could change that. Eternal Witness. Going to bring back the Uzarino, I would imagine. Maybe. Maybe not. Wants to bring back the old Walking Stone Rain? No, maybe Relic becomes uh, sacrificed. This is the... Oh, I see, I see. This is the point. And then, actually, Steve has... I don't know. If, if the Relic gets got sacrificed he has a weak tarmogoyf in addition to the witness not doing anything if he plays the tarmogoyf first he might force loic to uh to pop the relic fulminator mage no 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 says loic Lebrion. i guess he wanted to take him off white altogether but steve haddo now can play a two mana zero one i i don't agree with this sequencing i think you have to understand loic is trying to play for a longer game and part of that game plan um is to to keep Tarmogoyf small. Throwing more creatures in the way of the Monastery Swift Spear. Oh, this is going to be a blowout, I, I'm afraid. This is very unfortunate here for Steve Haddo as he goes straight on the snap block here and it's going to be Path to Exile on the uh, on the Tarmogoyf. Zimon Gertz, your head, your head is in your hands here. This is... Oh, and look at that. Loic Lebrion very aggressively pushing that uh, the 2-1 into the Steve Haddo's graveyard for him. Talk about BMs. Jeez. I mean, if, if, if your 1-2 prowess creature kills two creatures in a row... That's insane. You can't push your, your opponent's creature into the graveyard like that. You cannot do it. Monastery Swiftbeer has got up and about, however, and she's really turned the game around at this point. That path to exile was critical in emptying out Steve Haddo's side of the battlefield. However, he seems to have uh, recovered from it. He's going to draw a uh, card off the clue token here, and Luke Lebrion playing fast and loose with his opponent's cards. I really think he needs to keep his hands to himself here. Tamagoyf number two now. Comes down as a 2-3, so at least it's decently sized. And a hissing quagmire. Okay. Now, now Steve has a little bit of that value going yeah, on. And, and this is the. Th and, and if you notice, Simon, it, it happened as soon as he started to draw more than one card a turn. He was able to deploy two relevant cards after having cracked his clue token. And and, and Abzan needs to do this. They need to be able to play more than one card no. in a turn. And now it's eight, eight to twenty-two. Yeah. Um. Even even on cards, I would say most of the lands on Steve's side uh, don't matter. He has a two-two death touch. Uh, creature and Loic has one to prowess creature. Now it's basically a top deck war. And there are very good draws for Steve. There are also very bad draws for Steve. Well, that was one of them here, at least. Could have been good, could have been bad. Didn't get a good look at the card. It's a surgical extraction. A surgical extraction, Simon Gertzen, a card that is right at the bottom of Steve Haddo's. Uh, deck list there. I didn't want to bring it up while we were talking about sideboarding because I didn't want you to laugh me out of town, but it has been brought in. 
Relic of Regenitus taking care again of this Eternal Witness. This is the second Relic that's been played. What are your thoughts on the card Surgical Extraction? I understand the reasoning for it because you can come... First of all, Steve was l desperately looking for sideboard cards. Okay. He didn't have enough to bring in. And then what, what you can do is you can, for example, Inquisition or Boros Charm. You see another one and then you snatch it with, with the Inquisition. Okay. Uh, you could, it's also a way to get rid of those shrines uh, relatively easily. All right. Um, that's, that's the argument for it. Drawing it in that moment, of course, is, is the worst uh, possible timing. Liliana, this is what we need. This is what we need. This is a value engine here as well. She's going to go upstairs, keep that Monastery Swift Spear at bay, and also can be protected by the Hissing Quagmire. And up to four, da four life immediately, or four loyalty, means that Loic Lebrion needs to draw a Boros Charm to keep her under, under wraps. But uh, if Loic draws a Boros Charm, it's going straight uh, to Steve's face. That is also true. I mean, it is, it is threatening an ultimate in... <laughs> it is threatening an ultimate. Oh, he doesn't even need to draw doesn't it. Doesn't even need to draw it. He's got it. So Hatto down to four. If Loic Lebrion... Oh, we're going to see the Boros Charm taken straight out of, the, out of contention here. But not, not in the draw step. Okay, this is also interesting. Um, the Relic will actually prevent that from happening, yes. And the Surgical will go into the graveyard. Nice. So it draws two cards. Rift Bolt. Steve Haddo on four. Loic Lebrun unable to cast the Rift Bolt. So Loic will... Now he can. Either well, he can put the he can put the rift ball on the stack. That's probably even better than casting it. Uh, he can put it in into suspend. Okay, that's better than casting it because he gets the prowess trigger next turn. And then Steve will have to look for kitchen things. That's that's the situation we're in. Rift ball suspended, with one time counter on it. Steve Haddo in what may be the last draw step of this game, for him, unless he can. Flesh things out a little further. If this is not a kitchen things, he needs to minus two Liliana. There is also no creatures in the graveyard. Scavenging was a dead Jeez. draw. Yeah, Liliana goes downstairs. And mills over the collective brutality as well. Steve Haddo can't believe it. This card, again, maybe have been too little too late, but it certainly would have been better than nothing. Steve Haddo, what has he drawn? What has he got in his hand? It costs two. It's a Tarmogoyf. Loic is just the mad scientist of, of burn decks right It's now. insane. It is incredible. It's he has pushed towards the late game and ground out against a black-green rock player. Can you believe it? And because he knows exactly how the matchup goes after sideboarding, he knows that there are only so few threats in the black-green rock deck that this is actually giving him a very good shot at, at winning the game. This kind of strategy... It's still really hard to pull off because you do have to switch roles. You have yeah. to. I, th I also think that Steve made it a bit too easy for him with all the blocks, uh, just allowing him yeah. to get the two for ones. Yeah, blocking the uh, Monastery Swiss Spear a couple of times, uh, you know, on the back of the uh, the Grey Ogre in the form of Fulminator Mage and uh, an Eternal Witness here. But Steve Haddo, he could be. He, this could be it. This could be it. We've got the uh, the Rift Bolt. It's gone upstairs. Steve Haddo down to one. Rock players are used to winning top deck wars. Lebrion. Is he going to win this top deck door? It's Lightning Helix! Oh my god, it's Lightning Helix! Off the top, Loic Lebrion has taken it down. Steve Haddo, the warmest congratulations to his opponent as Loic Lebrion channels his inner Randy Bueller and uh, slams this Lightning Helix on the table. What an emphatic victory for him. Simon Gertz, an incredible stuff. And oh, Loic Lebrion, the way that he has pushed through the late game, played the deck out like a control list. Incredible stuff from him, Simon Gertzen. I'm beside myself. Wow. Incredible. What a way to win the game. Yes. Could that we... was just... I, 